came to me and said, Pastor, I want to confess that thing happened. I said, I told you now, I know you. And I know that thing happened. I said, why didn't you accept at that time? And you're using bold face. And you know, some of his friends that he told, I did nothing, I did nothing. Some of those friends, they tried to raise dust here and dust here. I acted as if I didn't see until he came after three years and said, now I accepted. I said, you know, my friend, now you start discipline because all these three years, you were pushing me and twisting my hand and you didn't accept that anything happened. And so he started the discipline. Eventually, um, you know, after the discipline, we restored him. And he left Lagos. He went to the stage. And in the stage where he was, he was um, not doing anything. And so after my preaching, one of the nights, people lined up. They were seeing me one by one. And he was next on the line. And he came and some, I said, wonderful here you are now he said yes i'm here now since when did you get here to this state he told me and i said what work are you doing now here he said the state of us here did not give me any work to do i said what didn't you tell him that you have been released from discipline when you were in lagos he said, that's where we are. I called, I stopped the line. I stopped the queue. And I called the state overseer. I said, state overseer, look at this brother. He's, he's been a worker from Lagos. Something happened with discipline him. But we have, re we have released him from the discipline. Why? You see, just lying piled there, not doing anything. And the state overseer looked at him and said, brother so and so what did you tell the GS what happened when you came to our state here and he was looking so I said overseer tell me what happened he said this your man from Lagos from the headquarters he came over here and he tried to rough handle a lady until the lady ran out I looked at him, I said, I called his name, I said, so and so. Did this happen? He dropped his head and said, yes, sir. And you know, restoring people is not just work, work, work. If you die on the work and you're still a kind of rebellious, disobedient, sinful, polluted and corrupted person, if you die, even when you're on the job, you'll go to hell. That's the reason why we take time. I want to be sure that the fellow that was disciplined actually has gone to the Lord and has confessed and has been pardoned and has been put and a new life has begun. Otherwise, coordinators, shepherds, group pastors, and local church pastors and district pastors we will become so timid that we cannot correct evil anymore and we cannot challenge people who live in sin and even if you discipline them one week after you're feeling sorry that you disciplined him the fellow under this tree is not feeling sorry you are feeling sorry and then you will go to him check up his number or go to his house and you are begging the sinner to come and do the work of a saint uh, let's let's understand the bible let's understand the word of god they might spend three years under discipline. It depends on their repentance. It depends on their purging. It depends on 
they are turning around, having a new life before they become involved in the work of God. But this man, it says, not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land, and it began to be in want. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to, uh, to feed swine. And then in verse, in verse 16, it says, And he would fain a field his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Verse 17, it says, And when he came to himself, a time comes, in our lives when we come to our to ourselves the idea the ideology that got into our head and makes us behave like mad people like drunken people the idea that came to us the idea of our position the idea of our dignity the idea of our self-esteem, the idea of our pride that came into us, and then we went astray and were still adamant in the far country. Eventually, we calm down. Famine softens people. Suffering softens people. Heartache softens people. And the agony of what situation we're going through softens us and that softness calms us down and what the preacher could not achieve to penetrate into our mind and to penetrate into our understanding the suffering the famine eventually brings us down he came to himself and said how many Hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, it says, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned. Three words. I have Seed. Look at the next point here. Number two. Number two is the right confession and surrender of a penitent sinner. Of a penitent sinner. Before we can be saved, we must be penitent. Before we can be saved, we must mourn and sorrow for our sins. Because blessed are they that mourn, they shall be comforted. There's nothing like, yes, I've sinned, but to air is human. Yes, I've sinned, but who does not sin? Everybody sins. I have sinned, but even the people that are there saying that they're leaving us, who knows what they do in the public? All that will not bring you salvation. All that will not bring you restoration. Comparing yourself with others, yet I know I'm wrong, but he is also wrong. Yes, I know I'm wrong. She is also wrong. If they are to mark iniquity and look at everybody that have sinned, will there remain anyone in the working team? You'll never get saved or restored when all you are looking at is, I have sinned, I am wrong, but other people have sinned, other people are wrong too. There must be right, the right confession and surrender of a penitent sinner. 
Now understand in First Samuel chapter 15, reading from verse 24, it and so said unto Samuel, I have seen the same words that the prodigal son pronounced, I have sinned. But you know, it's not just the word, it's the state of your mind. It's not the word, it's the repentance coming from your soul. It's not the word, it's the regret that you have because you've done that. Do you remember Pharaoh also said unto Moses, I have sinned. But you know, when the children of Israel left Egypt, this man that said, I have seen, he ran after them to bring them back. The, the mind he had before, even when he said, I have seen, there was no true repentance. The right confession and the right thing to say, I have seen. Look at uh, this uh, uh, Saul now. He said, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. If you are not a man of your own mind, of your own heart, that says, this is the way I will walk therein. You might confess, and there are people that come here every Sunday. I have seen, I have seen. During the week, they go back to the same dirty thing they were doing. And then the following Sunday, they come back again. I have sinned. And then during the week, Monday to Saturday, they go back to the same old life. That kind of confession, wrong confession, will not take anybody to heaven. When we get over there, you'll, not, you'll, find, you'll find, you will find hundreds of thousands of millions of people that was uh, in a, a time, they confess, I have seen, and now they're in hell. Why? It wasn't a right confession that made them to seek after the Lord, that say, Lord, I will do no more. And look at, look at Vastachi. In Vastachi, then he said, I have sinned. That's all again, repeating the second time, yet honor me now. I have sinned. Yet, honor me now. Pastor, between you and I, here in the private, I have sinned. But pastor, my people in my place of work, they know that I'm a significant worker in this deeper life under your leadership, privately, you and I, I have seen, but because of my stature, because of my position, because of the public, honor me, I've said to the other thing privately, honor me and put me there so that the public will know I am still in good standing in deeper life. What kind of repentance is that? But the man, when he repented, you know what he said? We're coming back to Luke chapter 15, We're reading from verse 19. In Luke chapter 15, we're reading from verse 19. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And that's the confession that brought the man the compassion and the favor of the Father, of the Heavenly Father. We must confess with genuine heart. We must confess not looking for recognition, not looking for position. We must confess, all we want now is just to be at the lower 
uh, rung off the ladder. And whatever you tell me to do now, there's no pride, there's no argument, there's no doubting, there's no full hardiness anymore. We're looking at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the royal compassion and salvation for the pardoned soul. It tells us from Luke chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 20. We're looking at uh, chapter 15, verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way up, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Look at verse 21. And in verse 21, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Look at verse 22. It says, And the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe that's representing the robe of righteousness, and put it on him, and put a ring on his son. That's a ring of authority. Those days when they signed anything, when they wrote a document, they put wax on it and they make the ring had a kind of signet, signal, and they stamp it on it, and the signet will show anybody that reads that document, there is the authority of the king. And so he said, put a ring of authority in his hand. This is not a ring for passion. It says, and shoes on his feet. Those days, servants, slaves, did not have shoes bought for them by the slave owner. They only bought shoes for sons. And he said, I'm not worthy to be thy son. And uh, the father said, put the shoes of acceptance that is now a son. Put it on his feet. And then verse 23, in verse 23, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry. Uh, that's like uh, the father making a feast for the son and invited other people to come. There's joy in the family. There is joy in the presence of God the Father over one sinner that repented and come back into the fold, into the family, into the fellowship. Verse 24. In verse 24, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and he began to be married. You can see the difference, the change that came. What the change, what the difference, the difference between being lost and being found. What the difference, the difference between being dead and being alive again. There must be a remarkable, obvious, visible difference when we are born again, when we are repented. And the difference is it was lost. It was a lost public sinner. It was a lost perishing sheep. It was a lost precious silver. But now he is found and life has now come. He himself feels that life. He feels the fellowship. He feels the change. He was lost, but now he is found. And because of that, heaven becomes joyful. We're coming to point number three. Point number three is the supplication, supplicating to recover and reunite the lost pouting senior. The senior brother, the older brother, 
had been at home. But today, this day, he went to the field. As he was coming back, he was hearing the sound of dancing, singing, joy, joy and rejoicing. And he was surprised, so he stayed outside. He called one of the servants. What's happening? I didn't know of this before I left home. Oh, he said, your younger brother has come back and the father has received, accepted him. And that's why there's merriment coming so you can rejoice with us. No. And so the father went out to see him, said, my son, your brother has come back. He replied and said, your son that wasted all your substance, me, your real son, you didn't give me anything to rejoice with my friends any day. And when this, your son always, always was referring to that younger brother as your son. Never referred to him as my brother. He never accepted that he will come back. And now you are rejoicing. I can guess you are going to give him responsibility. And what I have and what I want to monopolize and be on it only by myself, you are going to now tell your son to do this and do this when this man when this your son has wasted everything that he had without us living. And he pleaded and pleaded. There's no conclusion to say that he now came in. There's no conclusion to say he accepted his brother. There's no conclusion to say he embraced his brother. The brother was now inside. And that young man experience that taught him and sometimes experience is a great teacher maybe the best for some people he remained he wasn't going to go out again but the fellow remained outside 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 the father's house supplicating pleading to recover and reunite the lost Pouting senior. Let's look at three things here. We're looking at number one, the angry senior son lost on the field of service. You know, we can be lost in the, on the field of service. We're walking, 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 and we're busy in the work of the Lord, but we don't have any fellowship of the Lord of the work. Work of the Lord. Work of the Lord. Work of the Lord. But no fellowship, no love, no agreement, no acceptance for the Lord of the work. The man, senior son, laboring, lost on the field of service. Look at number two. Number two, the agreed, agreed, saltless servant. No salt, no sweetness, only grief, only sorrow. Yes, walking, walking, walking. But the fellow is almost having hypertension. He's thinking of the father is not doing well. How could he accept this uh, kind of polluted son? And he was aggrieved. The aggrieved, saltless servant laboring without the fruit of the spirit. No love, no joy, no peace, no meekness, no fellowship, no affection for his brother. And number three, the assured son's status through the forgetfulness of self. We must come to the point in our lives 
we must come to the point in our Christian experience of sanctification and submission that we forget self and rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep and interact with the people that have just been restored and they have come back and they come to take part of our work and they come to take part of the duty and responsibility and we grudge no one we don't grudge the father we don't grudge the pastor we don't grudge the son that just came back that is the real evidence of submission surrender sanctification but the one is always grumbling now and you cannot finish the work the work of the lord is so expansive it's so great the work of the lord is too extensive and you cannot finish everything the unsanctified laborer the unsanctified worker prefers that the work is not done than allow the returning prodigal to take part in the work that irritates them that infuriates them can we blame them they're self-centered they're not sanctified. Look at number one. Number one is the angry senior son lost on the field of service. In Luke chapter 15, verse 25. Luke chapter 15, verse 25. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house he heard the music and the dancing look at verse 26 in verse 26 and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant in verse 27 verse 27 and uh, he said unto him thy brother is calm and thy father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him safe and sound verse 28 in verse 28 and he was angry he was angry and, and he was angry the the, the 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 smoke of anger the fire of anger the fury of anger rose up and got to his brain. He became confused. He was blown away with anger. He was trembling with anger. He was filled with anger. He was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him and pleaded with him and beseeched him coming in come in but the man was too angry you remember jonah he went to nineveh and he preached and you think that the preaching was serious he meant what he meant to obey the lord he meant to honor the lord and the lord forgave those people when they repented that wasn't the expectation of jonah and the bible says jonah was angry because god was merciful because god was compassionate because Nineveh was not destroyed because they were saved jonah was angry matthew chapter 5 verse 22 matthew chapter 5 verse 22 it says but i say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment and whosoever shall say to his brother Reka, empty-headed fellow 
shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Angry. Angry. If there's anything that hinders those who are serviceable, if there's anything that hinders those who are nice otherwise, if there's anything that will block the way of some talented people from getting to heaven, it is anger. 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 They are angry against the Father, Heavenly Father. They are angry against the repentant, penitent, pardoned sinner. Uh-huh. You, you came back. We have been laboring here. Don't come over here. I hope they don't post you to my section here. We don't accept you. If there's anything that will hinder all these workaholics from getting to heaven, it is that anger. If there's anything that will hinder the people that I'm saved, I'm serving, I'm sanctified, I'm spirit-filled, anything that will hinder them from getting to heaven, it is anger. And you know, anger shows itself in action. Uh, sometimes you can be angry because it's uh, something that is none of your business that the father has done with the younger son as he wills. None of your business and you are angry about that. Sometimes some people are angry because uh, you, you don't, don't like that about the pastor. He's too direct. Well, you understand? I'm preaching to thousands of people. And some of the illustrations I give may not be for you. It may be for him. That will make him to think. That will make him to turn around. That will make him to repent. So why are you angry with me? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to him. And I'm telling him there are people that are heady. That are stubborn. And that will reject counsel. Are you rejecting counsel? Then it's for you. But if you're not rejecting counsel, I'm talking to the people that are rejecting, why are you going to be angry with me? And then there are people we've been praying for and we prayed and prayed and prayed and desired that they will come. And eventually they come, they come, they come. And we're so happy and we're saying, now don't go back and we see genuine repentance and we give them assignment and you are angry. My friend, why are you angry? You're doing yours. You're going to the field. Only that even though you're going to the field of service, you're not thinking through and settling your life so that you will get to heaven, so you will not be lost, so you will not perish, even though you are serving. Why are you angry? He that is angry with God, with his brother, angry with his pastor, angry with the people. Anger, anger, anger. Will be in danger of hell fire. We're coming to number two here. Number two, a great saltless servant, laboring without the fruit of the Spirit. Think about those who labor. Think about those who preach. Think about those who sweat and they exercise so much energy serving the Lord. The only challenge with them is they are not thoughtful to maintain the fruit of the Spirit. There's no love. There's no joy. There is no peace. There's no meekness. There's no lowliness. There is no humility. There's no gentleness. They are not gentle in their handling people. They are not gentle in their handling situation. They are too aggressive. Aggressive. They are forgotten that those who lack the fruit of the Spirit and they remain in the works of the flesh, 
that aggressiveness, they shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. This elder son, this senior son was saltless. Look at Luke chapter 14, verse 34. Luke chapter 14, verse 34. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost its savor, where we shall need be seasoned. Look at that, elder son. The sweetness of the salt gone. The preservative in the salt gone. The joy of the feast that you put salt in the food in the, in the feast gone. And there's no joy, only service, 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 dying on the service, but no saltiness, no savor, and no fruit of the Spirit. Look at verse number three. Number three is talking now about the assured status, son's status, through the forgetfulness of self. Forgetfulness of self. That senior son, me, I serve, I obey, I do this, I do that. Not one day have I defied or disobeyed your commandment. I serve labor every day. Don't talk about yourself. Let the Father talk about you. Be selfless. Selfless. But he wouldn't forget self. And he said, my son, you're always with me. If you can just get over this and forget self and forget all that you've done, forget blowing your trumpet and just serve, just serve, just serve because you love the Father. Serve. You don't have any complaint against the Father. Serve and let your mind, your heart be in the service of God without talking about self all the time. And look at Luke chapter, Luke chapter 15, we're reading from verse 31. In Luke chapter 15, verse 31, and he said unto him, Son, now art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. The only problem is you don't pray, you never ask me. And so you cannot refuse me. I didn't give you. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that has kept receiving, even your youngest, your younger brother you are talking about that went out, he asked that I should give him. And here you are with me all the time. You never ask, so don't complain. Let's forget anything we have against the Father. Against our God in heaven, against Christ, unimaginable that you have anything against Christ. Against the pastor, it's unimaginable that anyone in the church will have anything against the pastor. All I'm doing is to get you out of sin, out of rot, out of that corruption, out of the unsanctified life, and bring you to the mountain top and the highway of his his holiness. How can you fight a pastor like that who wants you to get to heaven? I might spend 10 minutes extra than you expected. I might spend 15 minutes extra than you expected. That's all right. That's all right. I'm trying to get the people out of the well of defilement and sin and get them to the mountain top of righteousness and holiness. How can you have anything again the pastor because he spends, you know, so long time reading the Bible. Of course, of course. He spent so much time talking about holiness. Of course, of course. That's my responsibility. Why are you grudging your pastor? Because of that. Stop all that and think about your getting to heaven and think about yourself 
selflessness in serving the Lord and forget all about self. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, it says, it was meat. It was needful. It was right. It was fit that we should make merry. You know, some, some people, if I was happy and I laughed and I become excited, you know, they'll say, this man, you know, he doesn't know that pulpit decorum does not allow laughing and being excited. If I kind of, maybe when the, when the choir is singing, if it's a song that reaches my heart and I wave like this, I wave like this, they might, you know, become angry with me. Why is he happy today? Why shouldn't I be happy in the work of the Lord? Why should I do the work of the Lord, sorrowful and depressed and downtrodden and, you know, no joy? Of course I shall rejoice. I rejoice because I found my sheep. I rejoice because the prodigal son is back. I rejoice because the ministry of the singers, of the ministry of the teachers, I rejoice because they're doing something that is bringing a joy into the kingdom of God. But the people that are so self-centered that you know, if you rejoiced on the pulpit, if you did anything that shows now you are kind of just there by yourself and you enjoy what you do, makes them angry. But we should leave all this kind of unsanctified behavior, unsanctified action, unsanctified disposition and say it is meet, it is right that we shall make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. I pray the joy of the Lord will come more to your heart. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. Sorrow, sadness, grief, depression, cut short the life. When you are depressed and, you know, you are thinking of negative things all the time, it, it cuts your life short. It's like, you know, you're almost parallel to the smokers. They have the smoke of the leaf. You have the smoke of depression, of anger, no joy in the service of God. You know, the fastest way for a man to run to the grave and to die. But the joy of the Lord, a merry heart, brings health. A joyful heart bring, brings health. And a, a merry heart that he is always happy and joyful. The prodigal son comes back home, I'm happy. The prodigal worker comes back to the work, I'm happy. The, the prodigal prophet realizes himself, I'm happy. The prodigal singers, they're singing the best I ever had today, I'm happy. Everything that people do, you put a positive side to it and retain your joy and forget self. The goodness of the Lord will flow in your life. Amen. The grace of God will flow in your life. Amen. If you deny other people grace, grace will be denied unto you. If you deny other people joy, happiness, merriment, merriment, joy, excitement will also be absent in your life. But Let's forget self now and say, Lord, praise you for what you do. I glorify you because of your love, your grace, your mercy. You accepted that person back. If you can do that for him, I know you'll do it for me and he'll do it for you. I said he'll do it for you. I said he will do it for you. Let's rise up now and... Praise the Lord. If you have gone away from the Lord, that like a prodigal son, 
a prodigal daughter, please open your heart before the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. Save me. And if you are gone away from the past of rectitude, the past of righteousness, the past of selflessness, in a way you are prodigal. Be a prodigal senior son, a prodigal prophet, preacher, always angry, always angry, always angry in the church, in the fellowship of righteous people. Why don't you just open your mouth and say, Lord, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Back to the point I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Worship makes you glad. Serving the Lord makes you glad. Forgetting yourself and ministering to the needs of other people makes you glad. Open your mouth and pray. Are you praying or meditating? Obey your pastor. Obey the Lord. Open your mouth and pray. Have you gone away from the Lord? Here is your chance. Don't allow suffering farming to be the thing that will drive you back home to the Father. Say, Lord, here I am. I come back. I return. I repent. It's merciful. If you have been wasting your life with riotous living, ruinous lifestyle, worldly disposition, your blood. You have lost your first love. No more excitement in serving the Lord. No more excitement, happiness in giving to the Lord. Tell the Lord. He says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you have let your first love. He says, Remember, repent, do the first works. And come back to the same exact mental joy in serving the Lord. It's your meat and drink, your joy and source of happiness. Serving the Lord, obeying the word of the Lord. Have the mind of Christ. Run after. The people who have gone astray have the mind of Christ. 
the mind of a true shepherd. You know those who have gone astray. You know those who are backsliding. Anytime you pray for them, a question. Anytime you sought for them, it's a question. That senior son never told the father, I want to go look for my younger brother. Never. Was buried in the work. Dead on the work. Lost on the work. His mind was not to go search for the brother that went astray and became prodigal. Do you have the love of God in you? Love for the brethren in you? It says, love one another as I, Christ, love you. Are you seeking for the public sinners until you find them? Or are you doing just evangelism to fulfill all righteousness? Okay, they tell us to go, I will go. Do you go with your mind? Do you go with love? Do you go with passion? Do you go with the intention to penetrate their lives with the truth of the gospel and bring them back home to the Lord? The perishing sheep. Are you going for us? Seeking them? to rescue them. The precious silver. Sons of Levi. Those who have been serving the Lord, but it turned away from the Lord. Are you seeking them? Sacrificing? To bring the lost precious silver to the Lord? Are you praying for the love of God to come back into your heart? As anger become part of your life, in your family, anger, something is delayed for five minutes, anger. The person who offended repents, he is received, he is reassigned 
Are you hungry? Anger. You did wrong. Humiliation came as a result of doing wrong. Rebuke, correction, as a result of doing wrong. Anger. What's the problem with you? You missed your step. And the person shows you to return to the right path. And the one that you are fighting with, anger. The anger of Jonah. That God showed mercy to the people of Nineveh. Anger. How are you living your life? Anger will drive you to hell. Anger will make you go faster and faster towards death. Anger. Anger cuts life short. Anger removes you from the favor and the grace and the mercy of God. Anger. Anger brings judgment and eventually the final judgment. Anger. You are angry. You are aggrieved because the Father has showed mercy to the repentant, penitent, prodigal son. Anger and grief will destroy your health, your personality, and will erode into every good thing in your life. Anger, grief, you are angry, you are grieved, turn around forsake anger cease from anger then you have the short son's status and the promises of God will be yours when you have a grateful attitude How grateful we are that God is a merciful God. How grateful we are to be in our disposition. That the compassion of God never fails. Settle with the Lord before you go. Come back home. Come back to the submission, the surrender, the consecration, the commitment you used to have. Come back home. If you're under discipline, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord 
that he may lift you up. If you're under discipline, anger, complaint, murmuring, greed, going about to seek sympathizers will not bring restoration. What brings restoration is humility, confession, surrender, submission, and doing the first works again and preserve the first love. Settle your account for the Lord before you go. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Almighty Father, we thank you for the exposure of your word. And we thank you because you have opened our hearts. We have seen your word. And we have seen the position you have kept each and every one of us. I'm praying this day, you will help every individual to really discover himself or herself, and pray right and get rediscovered. I'm praying that, Lord, you bring the joy of salvation, the joy and the gladness of recovery back to every life in Jesus' name. Father, I'm praying that, Lord, we will serve you with joy. We will serve you with gladness. And I pray as we go back to our various districts, Lord, we will be candidates seeking for the lost sheep, all the sheep that are broken away from our district. You will bring them back in Jesus' name. Father, I'm thanking you because you have everything to support us. I pray with your Holy Spirit, you will engineer us. You will move us. And your church, Lord, will recover totally everything we have missed in Jesus' name. We thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thank God you are here this morning. I want to start by opening our mouths to worship the Lord. Open your mouth and begin to bless God who has made it possible for you to be here, who has brought us from far and wide to worship in his presence today. Worship the Lord. 
and I saw him. Praise his dear name. The Lord is good to you and good to the church, and that's why we must appreciate him. Let the Lord hear your voice of praise this morning. Let the heavens receive your praise. To the mighty God, to the excellent God, to the great God who always do great things for us as his people. Worship him this day and praise him in the beauty of holiness. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, O ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Praise the Lord this morning. Look at your life. Look all around you. Look into your household. Look into the church of God. Many, many reasons to praise the Lord. And that's why this morning, we are lifting up the anthem of praise to the Most High. Open your mouth wide. And let the Almighty God receive the thanksgiving from you this day. Worship Him. Magnify Him. For there is no one like our God. In Jesus' name we pray. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in heaven vessels, that the glory and the excellency and the power may be of God and not of us. We want to thank God for Jairus Superintendent and all the other ministers that God has been using to shine the light of the gospel into our lives. Let's open our mouths and bless God for keeping his servant, our Father in the Lord, and all the other ministers that are laboring their night to ensure that the gospel move across the length and breadth of the globe. Let's praise God. Let's thank God for them. The capacity in their lives, the abilities in their life, the grace of God in their life to stand and to stand consistently let's praise the name of the lord and worship him this morning the lord is doing marvelous things through the agency of the spirit walking in the life of a father in the lord and all the other ministers let's praise god this morning and worship his name and bless him let's magnify the lord that the lord will lengthen the days of a father in the lord and the lord will strengthen him every time that he stands to preach and to teach and to minister unto the church and the world at large. Let's praise God. Let's worship Him. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray that God will use our Father in the Lord and other ministers this day to minister grace and soundness to the body of Christ. Let's open our mouths to prayer and say, Lord, as much as you've using Him in the past, use Him today, O God to minister to the church, to bless the church, and to bless all that are connected to us this day, that the Lord will use him as instrument, as he has always done, to bless the world and bless the church this morning. And all the other ministers, those that are working in the open, those that are working behind the scene, that the Lord will use them mightily to be a blessing unto his church this day. In Jesus name we pray in matthew chapter 18 verse 20 it says we are for we are two or three are gathered together in my name there i will be in their midst we want to pray that every worshiper this morning will experience the presence of god will experience the touch of god open your mouth and pray god is in our midst according to the scriptures and you are here pray and say god I want to experience your presence. I want to experience your thought. I want to experience your authority in my life this day. There are things that only God can do, and God alone. And that's why you need to pray and say, God, as you have brought me here, I want to experience your power. I want to experience your thought. Let it be so in my life. 
Open your mouth and pray. Ask the Lord. Your presence is here. I want to feel it in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. In Psalm 16 and in verse 11, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We need to pray this morning that as many that has come here with a weakness in their bodies, weakness in their spirits, and weakness in their hearts and sorrows of heart, that God will take away every sorrow, every weakness in any heart this morning. Open your mouth and pray. The Lord who has brought us into his presence will fill the sorrowful hearts with joy. The hearts that are palpitating, that God Almighty will cause his joy to arise in those hearts as they hear the word of God, as we listen to the teachings and admonitions, the joy of God will arise anew in every heart this morning. Let's pray that the Lord will do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We want to pray that everyone here today will have the right access to God. Everyone, irrespective of status, will have the right access to God. We'll be able to access God in the fullness of measure. Let's pray this morning. The Lord is sending the invitation that all should come to him. Everyone, let's pray that no one will come here this morning and not be able to find God. It is possible with God. With God to find Him as we call. Let's pray. Our children will find God. Our youth will find God. The adults will find God as we come this morning. Access into the presence of God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Luke chapter 1, verse 37, the Bible says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Salvation of sinners will be possible this morning. Can I hear amen? Restoration of those who are asleep of the way, it is possible this morning. And all manner of helps coming from the Lord, it's possible this morning. Let's pray and say, God, all things are possible to us, for we believe. Let the sinners be saved. Let the backsliders be restored. And those who need different helps, that will, it will come from God this morning. Let's pray. The Bible has told us already, it is possible. It is possible that that person that been living in sin all this while and causing problems to the hearts of the parents and everyone around, it is possible this morning for the Lord to save and save to the ultimate. It is possible to return to the Lord with a heart that been touched by the Savior afresh and new. Let's pray that nothing will be impossible in any life this morning, that all things will be possible. Open your mouth and pray. Maybe you have someone you know in the district church where you're coming from that have been a thorn in the flesh of everyone. Thank God the person will be here this morning. Let's ask God that the salvation, the restoration, that knocking off of the head of the troublesome Satan in the life of that person will be possible this morning. In all that we do, it will be possible. In Jesus' name we pray. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, I was in the spirit on the last day and had him, had behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Let's pray that the spirit of God will take control of everyone here. Everyone will be under the control of the spirit of God. John said, I was in the spirit. And today is a last day. Everyone, without exception, will be under the control and leadership of the spirit of God. Let's pray. Nobody will escape the touch of the Spirit, nobody will escape the power of the Spirit, nobody will escape the control of the Spirit of God this morning. Verse 11 saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book and send it. This morning we want to pray the revelations that will come, the insights that will come, the impartation coming from the Lord, we will be able to note them down and know them in our hearts and apply them to our lives every day. You are going to hear the word of God this morning in multi-dimensions, revelation of God's mind towards his church and concerning his people. As you hear this morning, pray and say, Lord, I will not miss any of the things that you have in, 
in store for me this day. As your word comes, as the teachings come, as we sing and as we pray, everything that you have for me, I won't miss any of them. I will put your mouth and pray that the Lord Almighty will work greatly in your life this morning. The Lord is able to do all things and to make you take great things out of the service this morning. And that's why we're here. And that's why we need to pray. Call upon God. I will not go from here empty-handed. I will go. The Lord has something for me. He has something for my soul. He has something for my entire being. I will not miss any of the things that God has for me this morning. Pray to God. Pray to God. You won't just come and go like that. You won't just come and live like that because our God is prepared and our God is ready to bless every worshiper today. Open your mouth and call on God. Call upon the Father who is able to do all things, that he will bless you richly and mightily as we worship this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. In Colossians chapter 3 and in verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. We need to pray now and say, God, all the words out, all the words, the songs we sing, the words are lyrics in the songs, and everything we do, the teaching of the Sad Scripture, the summary, the main message coming from our Father in the Lord, that the word you hear this morning will dwell richly in your life. You know, when you are rich, you can tell. And when the word of God is dwelling in your life richly, you will know it. Pray this morning and say, God, let your word dwell richly in my heart, in all ramifications. Let your word, your word that cuts across every aspect of our lives, every aspect of our being, let your word, O oh God, dwell richly in my life. And you need to open your hearts as you pray and say, Lord, I open my heart unto you. I am ready and willing to receive everything that you have for me today. Your word will dwell. I'm making additional room in my heart where your word will come in and where your word will be occupied. Open your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, let your word dwell richly in my heart this day. And whatsoever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. You need to pray and say, Lord, I don't want to be just a hearer only. I want to be a doer of your word. That everywhere that I go, everywhere I find myself, the people we know that I believe in the Lord and I trust in the Lord and I'm a doer of the word of God. Call upon God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father, we bless you once more for this morning that you have brought us together to bless us. Father, we trust you. Everything you have in store, using your anointed servant, this morning, we will not miss them in Jesus' name. We will be the hearers and the doers of your word. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We will remain on our feet as we sing from Gospel Hymns and Songs, number 157, GHS 157. Wandering child, oh, come home. Have you wandered away from your father's care? Heavy-hearted and sad, you roam. There's a sweet, gentle voice calling you now to you. Wandering child, wandering child, oh, come home. Is your frail bark adrift on life's raging sea? Are you tossed on his billows and foam? There's a safe harbor come home waiting now for you. Wandering child, wandering child, oh, come home. He's pleading today. Heed his gentle voice as he bids you no longer to roam to that dear father's house, haste without delay. Wandering child, wandering child, oh, come home. Child, come home. Child, come home. Wandering child, why no longer roam? Tis thy father entreats. Wandering child, oh, come home. <laughs>
Shall we pray? A great God in heaven, we thank you for bringing us here. We pray that your word this morning will serve as a mirror unto us. And as we see ourselves clearly from the mirror of your word, all that you're expecting from us to do so as to be blessed, you will do in our hearts in the name of Jesus. And by the time we'll be leaving this morning, our lives would have been refreshed, our lives would have been built up according to your word in Jesus' name. Thank you because you've answered our prayers. In Jesus' name, I pray. We had a lesson titled Parable of the Great Supper in our last week search the scripture. And there we learn how Christ made a visit to one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day. And what an opportunity for these people to have been highly desirous and honored to sit at Christ's feet, to hear his word, and receive the one thing needful for their life the salvation of their soul. But, unfortunately, they turned the dinner into a trap to advance their conspiracy against Christ. There we learn that our coming to church must not be like these Pharisees who came not to listen and repent, but to find fault and occasion to perpetrate evil. Also, our values for earthly things should not be replaced, you know, at all with the love of God. We must ensure that the love of God is above. It takes preeminence over everything that we do. And we come to today's topic in the search the scripture, lesson 116, titled, The Prodigal Son. Can we all say it together? The prodigal son. Thank you very much. A memory verse will be in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 20. We need someone to recite that for us. A memory verse. Yes, my brother there. Our memory verse is taken from Luke chapter 15, verse 20. 
and he says, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Luke chapter 15, verse 20. Thank you very much. Can we all recite it together as a count of two? One, two, read. Thank you very much. We have need a fast reader to help with our test. Luke chapter 15, from verse 1 to 32. A very fast reader. Thank you very much. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners fought near him. And the Pharisees and scribes mobbed, saying, This man received sinner and eateth with them. And speak the parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, do not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after which is lost, until he find it. And when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven, over one sinner that repented, more than over ninety and nine, just one person, which needed not no repentance. Either that women, either what women having ten pieces of silver, him should lose one piece, do it not light a candle, and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she collect her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the one piece which I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, that is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted the substance with righteous living. Righteous living. And when he had spent all, there was a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a city of that country, and he sent him into the, his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the hogs that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many earth servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy earth servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring either the father cow and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For thus my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew to the house, he had music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked, What this meant? And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father had killed the fatted calf, because he had received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gave me a kid, and I might make merry, that I may, might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy servant was come, which have devoured thy living with harlot, thou hast killed for him the father's calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. If it meets that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Thank you very much. There are three parables to consider in this topic today. Number one, we look at the parable of the lost.